Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. This is not how you ask for likes. Perna. It's not. But today, today I wanted to focus on the AFC West and what's been going down in training camp for my Broncos and the Raiders, I guess, and the Chargers and the Chiefs, who, for example, will be without starting corner Bashad Breland for their first four games due to a suspension. So AFC West day Good sports. Please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel for near daily NFL news updates. Today's episode is sponsored by Raycon and the Everyday E25 earbuds. Have you ever wanted earbuds so amazing that you could hear subtle subliminal advertising with outstanding clarity? Buy Raycon.com slash that's good. Wireless earbuds. If you're a fan of my show, but get a little nervous that I'm going to drop an F-bomb while you're watching with your kids in the room, the E25s and their noise isolating fit are the perfect solution. My dirty words will be our little secret. I use mine to listen to medieval folk rock on my bike rides. They have six hours of playtime, and there's a color option to match your inner spirit animal. Mine, of course, is the owl. And since there were no subliminal messages in this ad, I must tell you to click my link in the description to get 15% off your order from Raycon. Fans aren't allowed, media availability has been limited, but we've gotten some nice glimpses into Broncos training camp via Twitter. Wide receiver KJ Hamler is proving he could be a nightmare for any corner who attempts to cover him in man coverage. This is in addition to Jerry Judy showcasing elite route running day in and day out of camp. Judy has been earning the praise of the veterans for his polished routes and ability to have variety in his releases from the line of scrimmage. So much so that Tyron Matthew is taking notes from afar. Is this clip of Cortland Sutton hitting a trash can with the number 95 on it a not so subtle jab at Derek Wolf? No wonder he left for Baltimore. No damn respect. For a guy who is so eager to take out the trash, you would think Cortland Sutton understands when his take is trash. Hey, MJ dropping 80 in today's era. 80? Come on now. Bruh. MJ. Not even close. Thank Who's you. The... Kobe did it for a reason. There's no way I don't see it. MJ not dropping 80 in today's era. Not seeing it. Can't convince me. No. Stop it. No. You know the hype is real in Broncos country when the Broncos Twitter account starts stealing my shtick. Tweeting, court is in session, Judge Judy presiding. Even getting a nod from Ian Rappaport, like I haven't said this same thing a thousand fucking times before. The proper phrasing is, the United States Supreme Courtland of Appeals for the 11th Circuit of Offense is all of a Sutton presided over by Judge Judy, whose appellate jurisdiction covers every end zone on earth. We have been over this. That is how you say the nickname! Like all true artists, though, I'm just getting used to my ideas being stolen after I stole them from some of you unnotables on Twitter. <laughs> anyway, uh, emergency quarterback Von Miller has the happy feet of Peyton Manning with the throwing motion of Tim Tebow. So if Drew Locke, Jeff Driscoll, and Brett Rippon all get injured, feel secure knowing Von Miller can go out there and win a game. And considering he plays defense, I'd imagine he could actually read one pre-snap, which probably makes him a little bit better than Tim Tebow. Q, Tim Tebow defenders, in the comments. Now I'm not going to pretend to understand the validity of every drill they run in training camp, but if the Broncos ever have to face Mega Man as an opposing left or right tackle, nobody will be better prepared to fight through him than Von Miller and Bradley Chubb. Same applies uh, if they face Astro Boy. The Broncos have finally turned a, a major weakness into what could be their deepest position group on the team. Tight 
ends. Noah Fant had a great rookie season last year, but that didn't stop the Broncos from drafting another rookie tight end with impressive athletic prowess in Albert O. Jake Butts' return to the field after another ACL tear is giving Denver more options at tight end than any other team in the league next to maybe Tampa Bay. Fant, Butt, Nick Vanette, who I still don't know exactly why the Broncos signed, Troy Fumagalli, Andrew Beck, and Austin Fort are all listed as tight ends on the Broncos' depth chart. Denver kept four tight ends last season, and outside of Noah Fant, I have no idea how the tight end depth chart will shake out. Speaking of elite tight ends, here's backup quarterback and free agent pickup for Denver, Jeff Driscoll. Oh, I feel good knowing that there's plenty of cushion we can fall back on if Drew Locke gets injured. I haven't heard a lot about Drew Locke during training camp uh, thus far, which is good as it probably means he's not fucking up frequently, which would be worrisome since they barely just started doing real practices. Now the underdog that I'm rooting for is Broncos corner Devontae Bosby, who's fighting for that third cornerback spot and probably a roster spot, to be honest. Now, I watched Bosby back in the Alliance of American Football as he tore it up and led the league in pass breakups, so I was excited when Denver signed him last offseason. He was playing very well before suffering a season-ending neck injury. The Chiefs were the first team to actually take a chance on him back in 2015 as an undrafted free agent, and then he broke his collarbone in minicamp and was released. He then spent some time with the Bears and with the Eagles on their practice squad briefly was signed again and waived again by the Chiefs before landing in the Alliance. That's a dude who's been through a lot to get to where he is. Bosby's name popped up this week because Vic Fangio complimented him after practice. The Broncos do need a third corner to separate himself to complete what could be a very dynamic secondary. Maybe it's Bosby, maybe it's Isaac Yadam in his third season, Devontae Harris, the man out of Wichita, or rookie Michael O.J. Mudia, or the underdog's underdog, Isang Basie. The real challenge, though, is going to be figuring out who that person is without any preseason games. And according to Vic Fangio today, it's nobody. <laughs> Moving on to the Raiders. Now I figured out why Derek Carr isn't great. He's too fucking nice. Hey Shelby. Hey, what's up, man? Monday. Son, miss you, brother. Hey, Shelby, hey, Shelby. Hey, Be honest, I'm your favorite quarterback. Yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> Bob, what up, brother? brother good? Yeah, good to see you, brother. Candle, you got a tip of bar, bro. <laughs> cool, bro. Dang it. <laughs> Chuck, what's up, bro? Hey, you have a great year, brother. Yeah, really fun to watch. You all right? You all right? You okay? My bad, bro. I didn't mean to land on you. You gotta be savage, Carr. I get what you're doing. You're complimenting all of the guys who might hit and break your leg again. That's exactly what I would do, but that's because I live my life in a constant state of fear, and you don't wanna do that. <laughs> One guy who I think will make a big difference for Las Vegas, assuming Derek Carr can get him the ball, is rookie Henry Ruggs, who, like his former Alabama teammate Jerry Judy, got routes too. I think both the Raiders and the Broncos nailed their first pick in the draft this year, but Darren Waller wins for best description of his teammate saying he looked like a roach when the lights come on. And that's how you know Darren Waller did not grow up rich. Now the Raiders definitely need more explosive plays on offense this season. Defensively, they need to be better everywhere. Just nine interceptions last season, but if the NFL allows defensive holding, it appears the Raiders secondary will be much improved. By the way, this is what their new headquarters looks like. Either a great feat of modern architecture or possibly, if you zoom in just a little bit, the face of a crying child or a transformer. We also learned that Max Crosby spent his quarantine slapping palm trees to apparently <laughs> work on his technique. You know you hear about falling coconuts killing 150 people every year? This is definitely how it happens. Let's just call him Jean-Claude Van Hans from now on. To Los Angeles and the Chargers. Former Chargers tight end Andrew Voller 
uh, who was cut on the first episode of Hard Knocks, was signed by the Carolina Panthers. Volerit famously said, You gotta be fucking kidding me, what? When Anthony Lynn told him he was being cut. You gotta be fucking kidding me, what? I guess the Panthers saw that and wanted him more. The lesson here is that if you get fired from your job, you better make sure you make enough of a scene to get escorted out by security, or you might as well walk your polite little ass to the unemployment line. Now, if you watched Hard Knocks this week, you may have learned that while Justin Herbert throws a very, very pretty ball, he's going to need some time to develop. I didn't realize he only operated out of uh, the shotgun in college, because I don't watch college football, and never used a cadence to snap the ball. Just a clap. Basically the same way you turned on most appliances back in the 90s. I'm actually looking forward to Tyrod Taylor getting a shot with what should be the most talented offense he's ever played with. And finally, the Kansas City Chiefs can't meet in notes. It is with great pleasure that I announce that the Chiefs will be without Bashad Breland for four games after he was busted for Lance Armstronging himself. That's right, he took drugs on his bicycle. James Palmer reported that the Chiefs have known about this suspension for a while and have been expecting it, which makes me think Andy Reid is the supplier. No, he's too smart for that. I bet it's Eric Bieniemy, and that's the real reason he's not a head coach yet. Now, this is a bit confusing because Breland was arrested this offseason as well, but was facing a suspension before the arrest for violating the substance abuse policy. So maybe, depending on what happens with the arrest charges, he could get suspended again. But the shitty part for all of us hoping that the Chiefs lose because of this is Breland, despite playing the entire season at corner, is in my opinion, the fourth best corner in that secondary. He was tied with safety Juan Thornhill with three interceptions last season. That was second most on the team, but his ability and coverage is spotty at best. His suspension is a huge opportunity for Rashad Fenton to possibly become the number two corner on the team opposite uh, Traverius Ward. Fenton's role was going to get bigger anyway with the departure of Kendall Fuller. Uh, maybe they move Antonio Hamilton into Breland's spot or one of their rookies, Legarius Sneed, as a fourth rounder out of Louisiana Tech, an oxymoron if I've ever heard one, or seventh rounder, Thakarius Bopeet Keys, who might show out to earn significant playing time. It is going to be really hard for me to root against a guy named Bopeet Keys. What a great name pickup in the seventh round. The Chiefs also intend to sign safety Adrian Colbert after he passes the three-day COVID testing period. The Chiefs already signed Tedrick Thompson to presumably back up the Honey Badger. We'll have Juan Thornhill back as the starting free safety, plus Dirty Danchez as Mr. Reliable. I assumed the Chiefs were set at safety, but I also assumed $700 wasn't enough to sign three franchise fucking players in one offseason. So what do I know? Clearly it's nothing. The Chiefs also announced they will allow fans in their stadium this season at about 22% capacity. Doing the math, that's about 16,811 and a half people, which means they will have to find a child or a very small adult to hit that quota or maybe Andy Reid counts as one and a half people. I know why they decided to allow fans though, and it's because those fans know that this is their last season to get in a few more tomahawk chops before they become another casualty of cancel culture. Culture, cancel culture. As much as I hate the Chiefs, I do not hope all of their fans get sick, but I do hope that smaller tailgates save many of their fans from heart disease. See, I'm a compassionate person. Finally, Frank Clark, the philosopher, tweeted this. Drop my nuts on pain. Don't shit hurt more than failure. Like I said earlier, dropping nuts do kill 150 people a year. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports AFC West Roundup. Yeehaw, diddly do. Uh, that would have been better if Philip Rivers was still in the AFC West. Anyway, subscribe here. You know what to do.